The ear of corn was also a connection. Oh, by the way, trees are, their roots go into the underworld, their branches go to the heavens. They are the connection between us and the, 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 the realm of the gods. Um, the king was also related to an ear of corn. Okay? An ear of corn was the source of life. It's the most, it's the most, how should I say, corn is, or maize as they call it in, uh, in English, in, in archaeology, or maize. Um, corn is the most nutritious of the grains. And um, it's uh, this little bunch of hair on the top. The king would wear his hair in the style of this bunch of silk and so forth. They would deform their craniums. They would actually take babies of kings and squash their heads so that their heads would look like an ear of corn. Um, this is a celt. It's a green axe blade that is a sort of imitation um, corn, uh, corn cob, if you will. And this, this is, jade was polished so highly that it looked wet all the time. Um, and this is a stella. It's a stone monument. And the, the hieroglyphs on it look like grains of corn. And also connected, the sky has two major features. Three, really. One is the fixed stars. The stars are all there, and they're just like holes in an umbrella. They don't move. They're all in an interesting arrangement, but they don't, they don't move around. There are things that move. The planets move. The sun and the moon move, right? And the other thing that's a feature in the sky is that big cloud that goes in the opposite direction, right? In the east-west direction, we have the ecliptic, the movement of the stars and the, uh, the movement of the sun and the planets. And the north-south direction, we have the Milky Way. And if you haven't gone out to the desert and had a look at the Milky Way, I recommend you do it. Now, you folks actually are more, I usually take this, this, this lecture to school children, and they're like, what's the Milky Way? <laughs> Go see the Milky Way. It's fabulous, right? Um, and the, the path of the movements of the, star, of the planets is called the ecliptic, and the Milky Way crosses the ecliptic. And, come on, this is a Stella from... Uh, from uh, uh, Tikal in Guatemala. It's called Stella 31. And I think you'll agree that it looks kind of like an ear of corn. Mm -hmm. The reason the hieroglyphs are shaped the way they are is they look like grains of corn. Here's another Stella from Tikal. It's a little bit uh, broken at the top, but it too was ear, ear of corn shaped, masorca shaped. I think that is not an accident. They saw an ear of corn and a Stella as connecting earth and heaven. And this is a cranium of a little child who's been deformed so that their head would look like corn. He didn't survive it. His form is still not closed. But there's a painting of, the, of this so-called celestial bird with a head in the idealized Maya king shape. And if you don't believe me, here's another one of a guy that did survive to adulthood. This is a king uh, buried in, uh, in uh, Campeche. It's in the Campeche Museum. But anyway, this is the way the Maya deformed their skulls. They deformed them in a way that made them look like an ear of corn. Another sacred tree, like I said, was the Seba. It often has spikes when it's young, covered, covers the, 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 the tree with spikes. The bark is green, symbolizing life. And the bulging belly looks like a pregnant woman. And like I said before, the branches go out boop, 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 to the cardinal directions. So this was the sacred tree to the Maya. And when they built, when they made incense burners, they covered them with spikes to imitate the trunk of a seva tree. I think that they felt that the smoke coming out of, out of, a, of an incense burner was very much like the seva tree itself. It's something that reaches up to heaven. And that the spikes imitated the seva tree because the seva was a sacred communicator with the gods. Um, here's two paintings. Pardon me. This is a painting and this is a sculpture from about 100 BC, maybe 50 BC. This is a painting of a bird eating a snake in a tree. One of the heads is a snake. It's a two-headed snake. One of the heads is bit off. Um, the tree has a bulge to it. It does not have spikes on it, so I'm not certain that it's a seba, but I think that it's supposed to represent a pregnant tree. And here's a tree whose bottom is a crocodile, and the crocodile is bulging, and its body is covered with spikes, you know, like a, like a seba tree. This is, a, this is interpreted as, and there's the same bird, only the bird's sitting on a telephone pole or a telegraph pole instead of, a, instead of the tree. So we've got this artificial tree and this natural tree. Yes, ma'am? The, the Seba tree was representing an ear of corn. Is this right? An ear of corn 
and the saber tree and the king all represent the connection between earth and heaven. And do feel free to ask me questions. I know that I talk fast. And if you want me to slow down, I will slow down. No. <laughs> um, in any case, these are, these are uh, representations of myths. This guy's arm has been cut off. It is actually bitten off by this bird who's carrying it under its wing. This is part of a myth of the hero twins. And the hero twins are a very long story, which I'm not going to get into. But they eventually killed this bird by shooting it with a blowgun. Actually, they, first they injured it. They shot its tooth out. And uh, when it lost its tooth, it lost its power. Long story. Here's a much later painting on a vase that shows Itzamna, the great god of uh, sort of the Zeus of the Maya pantheon, the, 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 the god that is the most powerful. And he's got a little vessel. This little vessel is called sacrificial bowl. And out of the bowl is a crocodile. And its tail is up and it's turned into a tree. This is the same tree as this. See the sprocket on the nose of the crocodile? That tells us what species a crocodile is. It's a caiman, same sprocket. And you'll notice that this god, who's the king god, Khalid Samna, is having a chat with this guy who's got spots on his body. He's the actual man who shot the bird out of the tree. His name's Hunahau. And notice what they're doing with their fingers. They're doing the yellow pages, let your fingers do the walking, right? Whatever it is they're doing, this is not an accident, right? The guy who painted this is trying to tell us something with this fingers do the walking gesture, right? You know what I'm saying? Nobody draws, nobody does this by accident. And nobody does it imitating his boss by accident, right? It's clear that he's teaching him something. In any case, whatever he's teaching him, we can't read this. What these. did they use to make such fine lines? Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Good question. Beautiful, uh, beautiful question. This is painted on a vase. It's actually a rollout of a vase. Do you see this little curl here? And this little tassel, that's the same thing. This is, an un, this is an unwrapped photograph of a round vase. They used hair brushes, just like we use, made of the, 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 the fur of a squirrel's tail or some creature that has very fine hair. And they would just paint using uh, oxide, iron oxide, onto the ceramic. And uh, this is a technique which has been known in many, discovered by cultures all over the world. Uh, they started painting vases in Iraq about 5,000 BC. And they started painting vases in um, Mesoamerica about the time of Christ. Early, you know, early designs are just stripes and things. But they started, this is from about the year 700. And painted vases are the most valuable things that grave robbers are looking for. A nice vase like this would go for eight or $10,000 in a New York gallery. And so grave robbers in Guatemala and Mexico are looking for these things, which they can sell for maybe 100 bucks to some you know, runner who will take them to a dealer, who will then give them a thousand bucks, who will then smuggle it in the United States and sell it for ten thousand. It's that's why the graves all over Central America, in fact, all over the world, are being robbed at a higher and higher uh, pace today. Um, every country suffers from grave robbing. Even even in America, you go to uh, American Indian sites like Pueblo Bonito, and the ground's full of holes from pot hunters, people digging, uh, digging, looking for graves where they can find painted vases. It's a very sad state of affairs that the uh, thieves are better equipped than the archaeologists. They make more money. Anyway, what's, going, what's important here is that this is the crocodile tree, which is the, uh, the symbol of the, um, um, the world tree. So it connects the, the underworld, the earth, and heaven. And when a king stood in a ceremony, he was becoming a world tree. Here he is. He's dressed with a feathers in his headdress. That represents that bird perched up in the top. He's got this thing across his chest. This object, this object, this object is called a serpent bar. He holds it like this. Notice his hands are not touching it. You see that? He's holding it against his chest, but he's not holding it like this. He's holding it like this. And when you hold something like this, something, something's going on with his hands. Maybe his hands would pollute it or something like that. But this gesture is, is, is always used by these guys. Um, you can see this guy's got a little finger pulled in here. In any case, this object has two heads. This is the yellow serpent head. A blue guy's coming out of each mouth of the serpent. This is a skeletal serpent. Nothing's coming out of this guy's mouth, but it's uh, all bones. In fact, when you see, how many people have turned over a rock and seen a centipede? 